welcome to the sigmapath.com. As our first episode, I'm going to do a product review for you guys. This product is from a company called Celia. They make USB-based logic analyzers. They've had a logic analyzer on the market for a while now, an 8-bit one that's been very popular. And now they have released a new one, an, a 16-bit logic analyzer with some serious improvements. So we're going to take a look at these two products side by side. We're going to do some testing with them. We're going to take them apart. We'll look at the software and we'll also compare them to one of their direct competitor, which is a, a company from a company called USB. SX model, that's an 8-bit logic analyzer, which you can buy for about the same price. So, let's get started. Well, let's take a look at this product. Both of them come in this nice carrying case with the Celia logo in the front. So, if I take a look at the original logic, it comes with a mini USB cable. It comes with, of course, the colored cable that plug right into the unit. These are super flexible cables, and you'd come to appreciate why that's important when you're doing testing and you're trying to plug this into somewhere that's maybe a little bit tough to reach. It also comes with a whole bunch of these uh, grabbing hooks that connect directly to the end of this cable, and of course this side plugs into the unit. Now if I take a look at the logic itself, the construction of this thing is absolutely remarkable. They've gone through a great deal of trouble making this as nice as it is. This is uh, made completely from aluminum, except for the back, that's made from a uh, soft plastic. The input is, of course, right here where the cable plugs in. It has a mini USB in the back, and at the, at the, at the back of the unit there is the, uh, the Logic logo and the soft plastic that sits nicely on the table when you're working. Now, if I open the Logic 16, the brand new Logic 16, it has twice as many grabbing hooks, of course, because it has twice as many channels. It has two of the same colored uh, cable bundles that came with the original Logic and of course the USB mini USB cable and of course the main unit itself it is uh, again just as beautiful and nicely made as the original Logic. It's about I would say about four times the area but it has the same thickness and it has a mini USB as an input, the same as the regular logic, and now it has twice as many channels at the back. And what I believe is also there are little tiny holes in the front. I don't know if this is visible in the camera, and I believe there is an LED underneath which will shine through these little holes, which I think they must be done by uh, some sort of a laser, I believe, because they're very, very small. So now we're going to uh, take a look at how this thing performs, uh, connecting it to the computer, take a look at the software. I'll show you a little test setup, and then we will take it apart. Alright, let's talk a little bit about specs. The original logic could sample up to 24 mega samples per second, but really only under the constraint that if the computer's USB ports were not boggled down by some other type of um, activity. So I actually have not been able to get the logic to sample at 24 mega samples per second on my laptop, but it is theoretically capable of doing that. The reason this happens is, is because this guy does not have any internal buffering, so there's no memory in here. Everything that's sampled has to be either sent directly to the USB or it is lost. So if the USB is not ready to accept that data, you will lose that data. So that doesn't mean that this is not very useful. Depending on what you do, this have, you could completely live with that. If your signals are, for example, not really, really fast, you don't need to sample at 24 mega samples per second. That would be one scenario. Or the scenario is that if you have a computer that has a dedicated USB port that has nothing else on that uh, USB bus than this particular item, then it will also work very well. Now they have gone ahead and fixed that issue with the new uh, Logic 16 by introducing some internal buffer in this. This is a big improvement because this guy can actually sample at 100 mega samples per second given that you only use two of the bits. If you use two of them, you can sample at 100. If you use four of them, you can sample at 50. Eight of them, you can sample at 25. So that's actually one more than this because this is also eight. And if you go all the way to 16, then you can sample at 12 and a half mega samples per second. And you will always get that sampling rate because the data will be buffered internally. Again, if your USB is now really, really, really slow, the buffer in this will eventually fill up and then you will lose data. But I haven't been able to do that on this unit yet. The other big advantage of this over this guy is that this actually works with 1.8 volt logic really well. In software, you can select the threshold that you want to use. So if you're using 1.8 volt logic, you can tell it, and then it will automatically adjust the threshold, the slicing threshold of the digital data coming in so that you can make the correct decisions for the bits that, that uh, you're trying to capture. This guy, it can work at 1.8 volt, but not very reliably. Uh, in fact, on the website, it says that it's not recommended to do that. 
and it's better for you to essentially not use them below 3.3 volt logic. So again, for this, it's a huge improvement to be able to sample such a wide variety of uh, voltages. Now, because you have to set the threshold when you're using 1.8 volt logic as opposed to, let's say, 3.3 or 5 volt, I don't know how this would behave in a mixed voltage environment. Say you want to use three of the channels at 1.8 volt and then four of the channels at uh, 3.3 and the remaining channels at 5 volt. I think it would still work, I just don't know how well. Maybe we can test that and figure it out. And the other big advantage over the old model is that this guy, the Logic 16, actually has input protection built into it. And based on what the specification says, it should be able to protect at about plus or minus 15 volt uh, if you by accident connect it to something else. That can be very useful if you're anything like me, you might connect it to 12 volt by mistake. And if you do that to the original Logic, most likely it will be damaged. The customer service for Celia is very very good and they would help you replace or fix your uh, broken logic but of course you don't want to wait through the, all the time it takes to get a new one so big win for this for having these major three improvements of a wider bus having the input protection having the buffer built in and of course being able to sample at a uh, hundred mega samples per second if you need to capture very fast transitions at a hundred mega samples per second you can capture uh, transitions up to 25 megahertz. So we're going to try and see how that performs at different uh, voltage levels. So I've prepared the test setup uh, to put these guys side by side and see how they work and then that way we can also take a look at the software. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to introduce this in the setup as well. This is the USB SX I was talking about. This one is uh, from um, some company called USB. Uh, www.usb.com you can go and take a look at it. Uh, in terms of build construction it's no competition. This thing is, of course, uh, made of uh, plastic, and uh, this there's no there's no contest here uh, in terms of the amount of detail that's gone into producing this product. Um, this guy it runs at $169, whereas the Logic is $149. This guy does not come with a carrying case or anything like that, and of course the Logic does. So between the two of these. I would personally take the logic and I will go a little bit more into detail on why that is. There are a couple of things that the uh, USB SX does that the logic doesn't do and I'll talk about that. But I still think that in terms of quality, in terms of the software, um, the logic definitely is a, a better product. Alright, let's take a look at the test setup. Here I have a microcontroller that's generating some serial asynchronous serial data as well as some I2C data. Both of them are connected to the USB SX and the Logic 16 from Celia, and we're going to simultaneously sample the data coming from both of them. There's also uh, some uh, USB to serial converter as well, so we can inject some uh, serial data from the computer onto the microcontroller, and we're spying on those channels using both of these logic analyzers simultaneously. That allows us to compare the software and see how they handle data coming in and out and how easy it is to navigate through the software and uh, take a look at the and decode the data that's coming in and out of the system. And here's the uh, little LED I was telling you about. It's very nice. Um, I wonder if it does anything else besides uh, uh, just softly blinking um, on and off. Uh, maybe it's hooked up to the trigger and it will blink a little bit differently depending on what's happening on uh, inside. And we are getting power from an action power supply, there's a voltage regulator there, this whole thing is running at 20 megahertz and the data coming out is coming at about half a megabit per second. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with it. Alright, let's take a look at the software. I'm running a software on a Windows 64-bit machine, but the software is cross-platform compatible, meaning that you can install the native application on a Windows, Linux, or Apple computer. This is a big advantage because you could save your sessions under one operating system and load them under another. This means you can take the unit with you and it's connected to a whole bunch of different type of computers. So on my machine, I've already installed the latest version from the website. And once you load it up, it takes about a second or two to connect to either Logic or Logic 16. In this case, I have Logic 16 connected. So when the program loads up, you can see we have 16 available channels that are all enabled. And I can maximum sample at 12.5 megahertz. This is the reason is because all the channels are enabled. If I were to disable some of these channels, I would be able to sample at a higher frequency. I'm also set to capture one mega sample data, which if I hover over, 
will tell you how long that is in time. This is 80 milliseconds. So if I want to add some protocol analyzer to this, I already know I have serial and I square C data that I'm trying to look at. I go here on this side, on the right side on the analyzer, and I click and I go asynchronous serial. I then add the baud rate of my data, which I have right here. I will save that. It then asks me if I want to rename the channel from channel zero to something else. I know that this is a transmit serial, so I go serial transmit, rename that. I now need the receive side, so I go asynchronous serial. I again paste uh, the, um, the baud rate, and then I save it. I also say the same thing. This is now serial receive. I rename that. I'm now going to go and add my I squared C data. Here's I squared C. My I squared C is connected to these same channels, channel two and three. Of course, you can change all of these uh, as you wish when you're doing it uh, on your own computer. Then it will save that. And ask me to rename it. No problem. Rename that. So now we have four things that we're looking at at the same time: serial transmit, serial receive, SDA, and SCL, which are the I squared C data and clock lines. Now everything's set up. I can tell the software to show data either in uh, ASCII, hexadecimal, decimal, binary. I'm going to say ASCII for the moment so that we can see what ASCII characters are coming and going. So I will click on start and there you go. It captured a one mega sample of data. You can see there's a whole bunch of transitions. They're all uh, squished together. I can zoom in using the scroll wheel in and out and I can also um, span left and right by dragging and dropping the waveform. There's also inertia, so if I drag and let it go, it will, it will continually go through until it stops. A very, very important feature that is uh, quite beneficial when you're looking for something. So I go all the way at the very, very beginning uh, of the waveform at zero seconds. Here it is, and it also stops right there. So I have on the serial transmit data the uh, ASCII character 1 or nine has been sent and the way the code is working is that it continues to decrease this number on the transmit side so I know that it's capturing the correct data so 148 147 and so on and on the I squared C it does the opposite so it's J K and then there's L M and so on and every once in a while the computer sends something to the microcontroller which will then show up on this serial receive side so I can search for it and see if I can find it here it is, and it says, I'm zooming a little bit more, it says the signal, path, log, and it says test program, and there's a carriage return character. The software is incredibly well written. Uh, there's a lot of detail, attention to detail, every little tiny thing here has been taken care of. And the same uh, meticulous um, process that they've used to design the hardware, they have dedicated to making the software. This is also very good in, ter in, in the sense that they update the software quite regularly. So if you find a bug, if you find a problem, or if you just want to see a new feature, you let them know and they will add it to the software. So I also tried to do the same thing and I wanted to show you as a comparison what the software on the USB looks like. I have also installed that and I opened that, but unfortunately I'm not able to actually capture anything simultaneously uh, while the Logic 16 is connected. This is the kind of problem I was telling you about where because there is no buffer, there's no buffer on the Logic and there's no buffer on the USB, so therefore you cannot capture uh, data at uh, while the USB is being busy. Even though I have the sampling rate all the way at one mega sample per second, when I click on capture, it tells me that there was a break in the sample line that I should try and trace it at a lower rate. So that doesn't work. But I should be able to close the Logic software, which by the way will save all of these settings. So I will close it and then I will unplug it from the computer.